And as we've seen in some of the charts that were shown earlier, the diabetics tend to have higher rates of diabetes in their community, approximately twice as, as much as the non-Hispanic white uh, population. And the African Americans settle in somewhere in the middle. That's probably about 11% for whites, non-Hispanics. About twice as much in, in, the, in, the, uh, in the Hispanic community, and even higher in the Puerto Rican community, which we've seen re in recent uh, studies done uh, at Mount Sinai uh, by Dr. Steve uh, Whitman. Steve Rothschild from Both of whom I've who, both of whom I've worked with in the past. And, uh, and it sounded the alarm that in the Puerto Rican communities we, we have a major crisis going on and it's heading for catastrophe and it's affecting that community tremendously at every level that you can look at. So it's obviously something that needs to be addressed. Now what are some of the risk factors? Obviously if you have a family history of diabetes and hypertension, you're at risk. Um, more reason why to engage the healthcare system. More reason why to be on top of all the uh, uh, all the uh, all the individuals in our communities who are not accessing healthcare. If we don't get it early on, it, it, it becomes a major burden for them and for our community. Unhealthy diet. Well, I talked a lot about unhealthy diets and nutrition in the past. Uh, we eat a lot of processed food. Uh, we, eat, we eat a lot of food that, is, that, is, that, is, that contains a lot of sugars, a lot of carbohydrates. These are all major burdens for the body. Tend to push you into metabolic syndrome. Uh, these are the kinds of issues that, that need to be addressed, both by the government, which individuals can, can be active, um, trying to get organic foods, trying to get uh, processed foods altered so they don't have as many chemicals, and really, in the end, at the end, we need the government to partner with our communities so that we can have set some guidelines as to what is healthy food. And so you try to try to educate people that processed food is not the way to go. Healthy food, salads, exercise, these are all things that we need to educate our, our, uh, our communities with. And at the very earliest stages, preferably in grade school, I think that is where you really find the major gains. As I can tell you, even from my family, um, as my children were going through grade school, they'd get these educational uh, sessions where they they would have a nutritionist come to, the, to their uh, elementary schools, and they would get uh, information on what is healthy food, salads, soups, uh, things of that nature, and they'd bring it home. They'd actually help us to alter our diets at home. So the kids, I think, are the, the source of the greatest potential for making changes in this category of unhealthy diets especially if we engage them in grade school. Obesity is a major problem. It's been in the news. You all know about it. But it, 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 I have to reiterate something that I, that I heard recently. It's very important to understand that as you gain weight, your metabolism changes. You, you, you have many more uh, inflammatory chemicals that are developed by the fat cells themselves. So it's kind of a catch-22. As these inflammatory chemicals enter your bloodstream, you tend to retain more fat, and as you have more fat, more of these chemicals appear in your body. You know, these, these, and, and many of these things are driven by the obesity, by drinking, uh, uh, drinking and eating foods that have large amounts of carbohydrate burden. Um, again, it's education that's going to get us to a point where people are eating healthier, and you're going to see many more healthier people losing weight naturally. Uh, hard thing to do, easy to, everybody wants their pancitos, everybody wants to drink their Coca-Colas, and I've noticed that in the Hispanic uh, culture, the Coca-Cola, you know, you gotta have that. But again, one, one uh, cup of Coca-Cola has about 10 teaspoons of sugar. So it's an, it, and people don't think about that, but you see all the kids walking around the playground drinking their Coca-Colas, eating their nitrate-filled hot dogs, and eating their, uh, their chips with, uh, with uh, monosodium glutamate, uh, which in my, in my, in my book can, can lead to diabetes. And so, you know, why, why are they so heavy? Well, you know, look at what they're eating. And what are we doing at home to change that? Are we doing enough at home to change that? No, I don't think so. Now, obviously everybody knows about smoking and alcohol use. That can, that can also alter your metabolism and your health. Bad, bad. Okay. Not, not that I don't do it. I, I suggest you don't do it. If you do moderate drinking, that's fine. Social drinking is fine. It's when you go to access that you really have problems. Now here, what is 
metabolic syndrome. I talked about it, I haven't delineated exactly what it is. It's obviously changes in, in the metabolism of your body. You're producing more fat cells. And why is that? Well, part of the reason is as you burden your body with improper uh, nutrition, lack of exercise, and genes, genetics has a, plays a major role, especially in, in Latinos, insulin is affected. If insulin rises as metabolic syndrome uh, develops. And what does that do to your metabolism? I can tell you it does many, many things. But one of the principal things it does is it gives you a very high level of insulin, which is not a good thing for the body. It causes many changes in your body that are not healthy. And one of the other things it does is that you start to gain weight. You start to gain fat, mass. And you can tell how, you know, how many have had uh, family members that were very thin, walking around thin people, and then suddenly within a matter of six months as they get into their 40s, they start getting a bit of a belly. I bet everyone has somebody in their family that has done that. What is that? They're developing and going into metabolic syndrome insulin resistance tends to occur as you age. Right? Uh, fat cells, obviously, as we talked about, make more inflammatory chemicals. It's a cycle, and it can keep cycling as you get more fat cells, more chemicals, uh, inflammatory cytokines enter your bloodstream. Triglycerides begin to rise. Why is that? Because the body's trying to convert sugar that you're eating, that you're consuming, into uh, fat. Because that's how you store that type of sugar burden. Insulin is it's really high, it tends to do that, so you begin to gain weight. You start to grow bigger and bigger. Uh, good cholesterol drops, the HDL, the bad cholesterol, they call it bad, but it's just LDH, tends to rise. Now looking at these, at these factors, these are things you can look at, and this is how you can monitor yourself and your family members. If you're a man and you measure your weight at the envelope, like it's at the belly button, and you're four, if you're at 40 uh, inches, you're probably heading towards metabolic syndrome. That's number one. Number two, if you're a woman, if your weight at that area, around the like is 35 inches or greater, you are at risk for metabolic syndrome. The second thing, if you measure your triglycerides when you visit the doctor and it's 150 or greater, that's another factor. Now you're looking, if you have three of these factors, you're, you're in metabolic syndrome. If your blood pressure is greater than 130 over 85, you're, you're, ten, you're, you're tending towards the middle level. Fasting glucose of 100, it used to be about 110, but now it's lowered. You are another, you have another factor. And finally, the HDL cholesterol in men less than 40, and in women less than 50, you are, if you have any of those three factors, you're in metabolic syndrome. You have metabolic syndrome. You've self-diagnosed. talked a little bit about what it can lead to, diabetes, heart disease, hypertension, strokes, uh, kidney and eye problems, amputations, uh, uh, neuropathies, uh, again, many, many things that can, that can occur if you start to develop metabolic syndrome and as it's tending towards diabetes. The idea here again, and the reason why this is important, when you're in metabolic syndrome, it's reversible. If you walk away with anything out of this talk is that if you're in metabolic syndrome, it is reversible. Once it moves into diabetes, it is irreversible. You're diabetic for life. So it's, it's a really important thing. And we have many, many, many children that are right now in metabolic syndrome and don't know it because they're not going to see their doctor because they just don't understand what's going on with their body. Uh, this is where this, the educational process can intervene at this point. Let them know, let their families be educated as to, as to these, these five things we just mentioned a minute ago. Uh, you can help many children by just watching for those things as, as parents and as uh, adults. So what can we do to damage control? Obviously we talked about nutrition, that's critical. A regular exercise, you know, I'm waiting for the first of the year, I'm gonna promise I'm gonna do more exercise, I promise. But, you know, everybody starts out with a great plan, and two weeks later it's like, what? Uh, do I have to do that now? Uh, uh, How's life in Las Vegas? I've got to see that, you know. Uh, so, um, you, you've got to put down the computer.
computer, the television control, we have to stop eating munchies and we have to get out and walk around the block. We have to do what the old people used to call a constitutional attack. It's just to get out and walk. How many times do you go outside in the evening and walk around with your kids around your neighborhood? I do every once in a while. <laughs> but not very many people do. And that's one of the problems with our culture. There's so many things, computers, uh, uh, computer games, uh, the internet now, now that it's HD TV with 550 channels from every point. You can watch Indian movies. It's, you know, at some point, you know, how, ma how many times has, has anyone here in this room sat in a quiet room in a, in, a, in a chair and just thought about just nothing? Or just think about something that's important? I try to do that a little bit, but I find it very hard because it becomes very difficult to stay in one place for more than five minutes and to quiet your mind. We miss these things. We should get back to some of the things that our grandparents and great parents, great grandparents did. They were very, actually very, very intelligent about their heart, their health. Plus, they ate food that was very much, much better than we ever had and will have in the future. Uh, these are all things that you, unless you give yourself a moment to think, you never think about anything other than what's being fed to you from all points and uh, from all around your environment. So, I, I suggest that if you ever have a moment, sit alone in a quiet room and just try that, and you'll see how difficult it is. Uh, but try it. Uh, vitamins and mineral supplements, I think they're very important. I think there's a lot of bad press that gets out there that says vitamins aren't really necessary. They're often using poor quality vitamins when they do some of these studies. Um, I think they're necessary. I think everybody should be on a multivitamin, and I am. And there are certain other supplements, minerals, that are missing from our water. Our, we don't have well water anymore. We don't get minerals anymore. We get stripped down water from the water supply. And guess what? They put in two things that I don't get. They put in chloride into it. I get for the bacterial component, but it's not really good for the body. It tends to affect the thyroid. And then they put fluoride into it. I don't understand that because as an occupational medicine doc, one of the worst things you can get into is hydrogen fluoride. It is absolutely one of the worst caustic chemicals. I don't understand why they put it in the water. It doesn't, it's been proven that it doesn't do anything for cavities. The Dental Society has said it doesn't do anything for cavities. EPA has said it doesn't do anything. Uh, yet we still have it in all our water supply. And it does cause a lot of problems. There's a lot of young people with fluorosis problems, bone problems. But we still continue with fluorosis. We continue to put it in the water. Uh, that, is a, that is an issue that I think uh, politicians need to look into and to start to wonder why are we doing that. I know as a fact, if, look, when you go home, look at your toothpaste, it has fluoride. Okay? It says if you by accident swallow that fluoride, just the amount that's in that little amount you put on it, call the poison control center. Yeah. But that amount of fluoride that's in the toothpaste, that amount that you put in your mouth, is the exact amount that's in a cup of water from your uh, uh, municipal uh, uh, water supply. So it's the exact same amount. So, so uh, <laughs> <laughs> I just, I, I don't get it. I don't get it. Weight reduction, now he's going to do that food reduction. Weight reduction is, is important. Again, I think as people eat better, as we have more whole foods or whole food like organizations around the city, we're going to be eating better, we're going to be eating healthier. Uh, if, if you take a can and you look at it and you can't even pronounce what's, that, what's in there, you don't want to eat it. You want it, if it has two or three products or things in it, then you're probably okay. But if it has a laundry list of chemicals, it's probably not the best thing to eat. Go home and get some fresh veggies and cook them and, and you'll be much better off. So the nutrition is going to be much better if we start doing that and start educating ourselves and not just put, uh, picking cans off the shelf. Uh, medical management and treatment, obviously everyone's trying to work to get access to all the poor communities, all the minority communities, all the Hispanic communities. Try to get access to, to good health care. Try to get access to our medical centers. Um, there's a great lack of knowledge in our communities, both Hispanic and black and others, as to how to, how to access health care. It's a, a, even in this day and age, there is a lot of mis misunderstanding, and, and I encourage everyone here who's obviously taking the initiative to come and, and listen to these talks, to talk to your, to your relatives, to talk to your neighbors. We don't talk to our neighbors enough. 
We need to send this information out to others, share what I've just told you about metabolic syndrome. It's extremely important for our community. If we don't do something about it in the near future, we're going to have a catastrophe on our hands. These are some of, we've already kind of talked about many of these things. What we're trying to do is the education, partnering with Hispanic physicians and other minority physicians. Community groups are critical for getting the word out. Working with schools, uh, I can't explain how important that is for, for, for the future of the health care of our children. Uh, governmental agencies can help us, but we have to help ourselves. We can't always put it on the legislators to do that. We have to educate them ourselves. We have to go to their offices, we have to talk to them, tell them what the issues are, tell them what's important for our communities, our health, our education, obviously safe streets, because you want to be able to take that constitutional and come back in one piece. All right? So these are all important things. And finally, we have to show some leadership. You want the power, then show the leadership and take the responsibility. No one will give it to you. You have to take it. Okay? It's time to stop asking. It's time, it's time to start demanding. All right? And the only way that happens is if you first educate yourself to what your rights are, health-wise and otherwise. And then, from that fund of knowledge, get out there and show some leadership. Because it's, it's, don't wait for everybody else to, to do it. Uh, you help me and you help yourself when you get out there and say, this is not right, I'm not happy with this, my kids need better, better education, they need access to their health care, and we need safe streets. I think those are the fundamental things. Um, and, and, and so I encourage you, please, educate yourself. Um, and with that, that's the end of my, 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 uh, my little uh, speech here. Sorry about that. Uh, but, I, you know, I, 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 it's the opportunity to talk about these things, and I just want you to walk away. Make sure you understand metabolic syndrome is reversible. Okay? All right, well, thank you. Thank you for the time. That